When you work as an Angular developer, you need to know how to migrate to a newer version on Angular, especially when you have some older legacy version. And during the last 10 years, I migrated lots of Angular projects to newer version, actually starting from Angular 2, where the amount of breaking changes in the new version was tremendous. This is why by the end of this video, I will propose you a plan how you can easier upgrade Angular to newer version, even when you have an old version with lots of breaking changes. And first of all, you must understand the scope of your work. If you are upgrading your Angular project, for example, from 15 or 16 to 20, it is much easier to do than, for example, upgrading Angular 9 to the latest version. What to do with that? You probably know the official Angular tool, which is slash update guide, and here you can select a version from which you want to migrate and to which you want to migrate. Then you are selecting the complexity of the project, like let's say advanced, and then what you are using. And it shows you everything that you need to do in order to update it. Realistically, from my experience, this tool will only work when you are jumping not a lot of versions at once, like for example from 15 to 16. When you have some huge jump, like from version 9 to the latest version, it is too difficult for it to work, and it never worked in my case. This is why actually it is not a tool that I would recommend for some big project, especially when you have older version. And you have just two ways of updating your project. Variant 1, you simply update your versions of all packages to the latest version, and then you suffer through all your errors to start the project and then just fix all errors one by one until you are done. You must understand that it is really tedious process it will take lots of time and you can't estimate it. Additionally to that, errors would be really difficult because sometimes these are just some configs which were changed and you didn't saw that, and so on. So you will spend lots of time in looking in GitHub issues and try to fix all these errors. This is what you will do 90% of the cases. Another 10% is the idea that you simply generate a completely new Angular project with the newest version and then you try to copy your old files from the old project to the new project. It depends obviously on the complexity of your project, but it might be easier, because you don't really need to spend time on setup, you simply copy the source code, not really the setup of the framework. But again, the older the version, the more tedious it will be, especially when you have a huge project. And just to remind you here, if you have several teams which are working together and you have one or more Angular projects and you need to support them, it makes a lot of sense to use tool like Enix, where you can just throw all your projects together, upgrade Angular only once for all these projects and additionally share your libraries. This is the typical approach how it is done in Angular Enterprise. And now I want to share with you some rules which you need to stick to if you want to make your upgrade easier. First of all, refactor in isolation. What does it mean? You have the whole project and you want to migrate from modules to standalone components. Just to remind you, modules are deprecated and it is better to write nowadays standalone components which are working kind of like modules. What you should not do is just try to remove all modules at once in your application and replace them with standalone components. As they are deprecated but not removed, you can simply go one by one and refactor just a single module to a standalone component. And obviously you need to start with smaller ones, then you will see that it continues to work and you can proceed with other components. So limit your changes just to a single module. Another important point is to migrate pieces of your code to signals where it makes sense and where it is possible. And this is exactly what we are doing in my middle to senior bootcamp. We are planning our architecture first and only then apply necessary changes. And just to remind you, signals are not a replacement for everything that you have in your application. If you have a difficult Angular application, you probably have inside lots of RxJS code, and this is fine, because RxJS is an advanced library which can help you with different cases, and it is completely fine to still use RxJS a lot together with signals. 
You can convert some pieces of FreeXJS, like for example subjects, to signals to simplify your code. But in big projects, people are using signals together with RxJS. You can't simply replace RxJS completely with signals because the API of signals is much simpler. But nevertheless, signals with signal inputs and computed values is a way to go to simplify your code and write it in a reactive way. Another point is refactoring state. A lot of projects that I saw have stayed in every single component or in some random services. They don't have any structure and they don't organize their state. Then later it is difficult to support it in a one way. This is why a good way to go here is to have a global state, like for example NGRX. It gives you an architecture that you can follow in order to have just a single global state where you can easily debug all your values, and it works amazingly even in big projects. Another point which is more recommendation than a must is to separate your rendering components or UI layer from business logic components. Why do we want to do that? First of all, it is easier to change because then you just have a set of inputs and some markup and it is easier to test. You mostly don't even want to test your UI components and you just want to focus on business logic inside your components. One more point when you are upgrading your Angular or refactoring something is you want to focus first on the business logic. You should not care a lot about rendering, business logic is more important. This is why things like reducers, where you are writing how your state is changing, or all your helpers or services, where you have functions which transforms your data, this is exactly what is important in your application. This is why it makes a lot of sense to migrate it first and obviously cover it with tests when possible. One more trick that might help you when you are upgrading Angular or doing some refactorings is by using adapters. The idea is to still use all the API even when you are building new stuff internally. In this case it is easier to introduce changes as you are hiding them under all the API. One more recommendation is super important. Don't forget when you are doing some changes that it makes a lot of sense to cover your code with tests first. In this case you will be sure that even when you upgrade Angular it will work just fine, because when you refactor your component for example to signals it might stop working, because you have some problem with re-rendering and you want to catch this problem with tests and not in the runtime. And this is exactly what we are doing in my middle to senior frontend bootcamp, where we are testing all our features from start to the end with unit testing and end-to-end -end testing to make sure that it is working properly. So if you are serious about becoming a senior developer, check the link to the bootcamp under the video.